Hello and welcome to Political Adda. In the past 24 hours, two major leaders of the Congress, namely uh, Gaurav Vallabh, a uh, national spokesperson of the party, and former MP Sanjay Nirupam have left the party. Gaurav Vallabh has gone ahead and joined the BJP. Sanjay Nirupam is yet to spell, it, spell out his plans, but has said all options are open for him. And on that note, today we are going to discuss this exact uh, issue of why uh, why there, there has been a string of defection of uh, leaders from the Congress. Uh, and joining me today from Delhi is our political editor, D.K. Singh, and uh, Mr. Sanjay Jha, uh, Congress leader. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Why, why is this happening? Why we always see an exodus of leaders towards the ruling party right before elections, but in, in case of the Congress, there's literally been a steady drain. Uh, since 2014. So, in, what is the crux uh, of the issue over here? You know, Mansi, the short answer is that in India, there is no such thing as an ideological fidelity. Uh, in a great number of ways, a lot of people call me as the oddball. You know, a guy who's had a problem with his party, got suspended, and still bats vigorously for the same party. Uh, in all formats, including the book that I recently wrote. And the reason is that I believe that politics bottom line must be about the faith that you have in what your party stands for. Now, unfortunately, in India today, if you look at the political confabulations of our times, uh, the trading of MLAs or horse trading, or call it the MLA stock exchange after Operation Lotus, has legitimized the movement of politicians from one party to another. You know, on the day, if you look at the pictures, whenever, uh, if you look at Vallabh's pictures today, they're all over the place. I mean, it is almost like a celebration that, you know, today it's like an acquisition. It's like how a big multinational company acquires a company or m as are happening, mergers and acquisitions. We have made our politics, to be very honest, into a mammoth joke. Like, for example, you will rarely hear about a Labour MP joining the Conservatives in the UK or vice versa, or for that matter, Democrats and you know Republicans in the United States. But in India, we have legitimized, we have almost made it the new normal that if leaders move from one party to another, it is kosher. Just to tell our viewers, when you said you said something because of which you were suspended from the party, you are very high-flying Congress spokesperson, if I could say. Start after everywhere, you're very articulate. What happened exactly? If you can tell, tell our viewers, because it has been four years, people might have forgotten about it. Yeah, you know, DK, let me just tell you this. I actually started fighting for the Congress party officially in 2013, and you know, that was the time when uh, everybody was kind of getting bludgeoned by these uh, uh, pressures from Arvind Kejriwal and Nana Hazare, and then, of course, the BJP itself. But the truth is that. You know, I, I just believe that when you are passionately uh, committed to a party, you know, even if the party has several fault lines and, you know, issues that it needs to address, I mean, you can't abandon the party. It's like a relationship. You know, relationships have their ups and downs. You don't just walk away and go to Tinder and look around for the next, you know, kind of person you want to date. And I, I, I frankly speaking, you know, had my issues because... I was very upset that the Congress was not really pushing back against the BJP after the 2019 elections. Uh, the Congress lost, but I felt, you know, once you lose an election, you got to get ready for the next big fight. And the Congress did not really fight as hard as it should have done in Haryana. Had it done, it would have won Haryana. In Maharashtra, despite being extremely feeble, it managed to do reasonably well. And in Jharkhand, it ended up eventually forming a government. So I just feel that the Congress party's very laid back, lackadaisical kind of an approach was what I really got upset about. And because internally, everyone was still talking about who's going to be the Congress president, nobody was really thinking about how to take the party forward. And I believe in politics, you should make every day count. And so I wrote an article in the Times of India, basically suggesting to the Congress party why it needs to do elections to the Congress Working Committee, why it needs to have an independent Congress president and not necessarily from the Gandhi family. If somebody else came up, why not? And I recommended that somebody like Rahul should look at probably playing a role of a more ideological ambassador of the party. Frankly, the party has ended up doing a lot of that. Rahul's Bharajoro Yatra has been exactly 
fighting for what the Congress's idea of India is all about. Mr. Kharge is now the Congress president. And if the Congress party is still struggling, I don't think it's got to do with as much about its own internal inability to still communicate with a lot of transparency with its people. It's got a lot to do also with the fact that now a lot of politicians in the party who joined because they were expecting you know, low-hanging fruits to fall into the laps, they haven't found it happening. But that's their own personal morality. I can't comment on Vallabh or Sanjay, who's a very good friend of mine. That's their personal value judgment. Point about Gaurav Vallabh living. Officially, he has given three reasons. He's saying he did not like uh, the Congress party's response to the invitation to attend uh, Ram Lala's consecration ceremony in uh, Ayodhya. Second reason is he's questioning the party's silence on criticism of Sanatan. And third, he's saying that you have been abusing wealth creators of the country. What do you think about three issues? Well, uh, you know, to be honest, I think these these seem to be dictated to him by uh, the party that he's joined to. Yeah, fair, because fair, fair enough, fair enough. But you, you know, I, I think Vallabh and I come from the same uh, business school of XLRI. I think he was a professor there. I did my MBA from there. I I, I think anybody who's got elementary knowledge of balance sheet and PNL will tell you that the Adani issue, if Adani is the wealth creator that he's talking about, uh, is a no-brainer. There are some serious shenanigans or skullduggery in the Adani books. And at some point, it will be exposed. The markets reacted and gave a message on the Hindenburg report. What does he mean by wealth creators? I have no idea. Wealth creators are not, by the way, crony capitalists. They get they, they actually are anti-competition. They're actually killing the entrepreneurial spirit of the country because they get government contracts coming to them uh, through quid pro quo deals, as we are finding in the electoral bonds issue. So I really don't understand the wealth creators aspect. Frankly speaking, the Congress actually, in my opinion, has ba- has been battling for the right side. It's not been anti-industry or anti-liberalization or FDI. It has talked about how to actually boost Indian industry by, you know, kind of making policies that are more friendly for the MSME sector in particular, which is the right way forward. And if if you look at Mr. Modi's government, the make in India today has been such a disaster that 10 years later, the share of manufacturing in India's GDP is down to 14%. So I really don't understand what he means by wealth creators. Number two, and by the way, he was one of the most vocal critics of, uh, of, of I think, the Adani issue and several other big business, uh, you know, kind of shenanigans. The As far as the Sanatan issue is concerned, I think the Congress party took a bold view. Even I was of the opinion that the Congress party should have gone for the Pran Pratishta and equally questioned the BJP for trying to politicize the event. It didn't have to be an either or. So as, as somebody who, who understands politics, I felt the Congress didn't have to do an either or. You should have gone for it. Never let the BJP become the custodian of Hinduism. Don't let them abuse the opposition for being anti-religion, you know, religion, et cetera, which I think is an absurd argument. But because of propaganda, these things do stick. You know, that's the reality of our of our lives today. So you've got to be very uh, you know, cognizant of the truth. I felt that if today Gaurav Vallabh is saying what he's saying, then I think, you know, he needs to look within because these are issues that you do need to espouse even internally. And did he do that? I really am not so sure about it. I think the Congress, to, in all fairness, uh, DK and, and Mansi, that, you know, they gave him a chance to contest both assembly elections in, in Jharkhand and Rajasthan. He may not have succeeded. That's He's not to be blamed. You win and lose in elections. That's fine. But you did get your opportunity. And he's a young man. He's not an old man. In politics, even beyond 60, you're a young man So I or a young person. So I think you need to have the patience to be there. Yeah, is what happened to you. Uh, basically, any leader who speaks out uh, uh, about the Congress's lackluster approach uh, or basically points uh, to certain flaws in the party's strategy uh, is meted out with punitive measures. Is what happened to you becoming a trend? Well, you know, Mansi, I just feel that I am going to add this point that the Congress party is a challenger party to be to the BJP should be extremely circumspect in not losing people. So there are two sides of the argument. One is the individual. The second is the political organization. As far as the individuals are concerned, I leave it to their own morality. 
Now, as far as the organization is concerned, I'll tell you why the Congress party is basically not handling it right. You do get the signals from people a little early in the day. You know, they 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 kind of, they yes. do talk to people around them. It's not, I'm sure Gaurav or Sanjay Nirupam. I spoke to Sanjay Nirupam actually around a week ago. And he was, he, he sounded to me to be upset. I feel that the leadership therefore has to be extremely uh, receptive to people who are, you know, disgruntled or unhappy. After all, I believe like in a corporate, you hate to lose talent. In fact, people have non poaching agreements to make sure you don't lose your your mm. talent to your competitor. So here it is the responsibility of the Congress party, even if Gaurav Balav is left today or Nirupam is left today and my friend Milin Debra left the other day, you, you cannot be casual when people leave you. After all, what is a political party? Congress is not just an address, right? 24 Akbar Road. It is made by the people who work for you. So, you know, I do feel that there has been a little bit of a complacency and almost an approach that says, if somebody's left me, that's their bad. It's not true. You can't paint them as, you know, being, you know, people who are traitors, who were treacherous to the cause, because perhaps they have their own compulsions. And I'm no one to pass a judgment on it, whether it's right or wrong. You know, each one to themselves. But the party should never lose good talent. You know, the one thing that I have kept saying all the time, what distinguished the Congress pre-2014 and the BJP was the excellent talent Congress had, as opposed to what I always felt was a talent deficit in the BJP. But today, look at look at what the BJP has done. It's appropriated good people. A Jyotir, a Jitin, an RPN, a Sunil Jakar, and you know, Milindev, not Milindevra, but you know, let's Balab. It's a loss for the Congress. Like it or not, it's a loss. Now, one can justify and rationalize it and say individuals leave you and there are rats leaving a sinking ship. These are good rhetoric. Bottom line, the party loses the BJP games. And we've got to figure out a way to handle that. There are two questions here. First is, of course, uh, you know, the original question we asked uh, uh, in a tweet. Is it the pull factor or the push factor? Is it the BJP's full pull factor or the Gandhi's push factor? We don't yeah, if you want to go, you go. You, you, know, you know, frankly, it's a combination of both. Maybe the percentages differ. So, for example, in a lot of people like I feel, like Jyoti Radhindya, I think it was unfortunately very really badly handled by the Congress. I know a lot of the people who have left, and I can tell you that had the Congress party leadership been actively kind of listening, engaging in troubleshooting, just finding out, okay, listen, how do we fix a problem? I'll, I'll give you an example. I felt that when this whole Punjab imbroglio happened, when the good old captain had to leave the party and the captain Sidhu issue, I think, frankly, the Congress president or the leaders had to just call the two of them and just sort it out. You do that by conversation, saying, okay, what's your problem with him? What's his problem with, the, with you? Uh, what are the kind of alternatives you're looking for? And sort it out. You don't, you see, the fact is that DK and Mansi, you know, when you engage with interlocutors, you actually create more problems. You know, you know, end of day, you got to take the bull by the horns. So I would say the answer is both push and pull. Now, where the pull is happening, is happening on account of, what I call is this whole threats that are given to people. And there are so many of them. I mean, you've seen the recent expose done by Indian Express and, you know, 25 leaders move, 22 are having, you know, cases literally going into cold storage. I mean, that's ridiculous. I know, I know leaders in Maharashtra, by the way, MLAs or who joined the BJP, who said, now that I've joined the BJP, I can sleep well in the night because the yeah. EU is not going to come and harass me. Now, these are absolutely scandalous but you know it has become the new normal like it or not that's the truth so it i think for the congress as an opposition party i would never lose a single member of my team if i could help it if somebody goes and they have made up their mind to go to join bjp because they have been promised something and they have a career aspiration well you know they have a fundamental right to do so but you should make sure that your horses never run away from the stables because you are sleeping or you're indifferent. Now, the BJP is poaching. It's immoral. It's unethical. It's uh, 
it's even illegal in my opinion but who cares is it because the leadership of the congress has become more uh, ego driven i mean instead of thinking about the party's interest and if you look at the history of congress i mean we had congress o when indira gandhi spread first time second time we had congress o's there was constant attempt to bring those leaders back who were yeah. on the other side yeah. in fact i recall uh, sharad pawar writing in his memoir that i think in the 80 or 9 81 when indira gandhi was the prime minister he had broken away by then she called him to his to her office yeah and then wanted him to basically come back to the congress or join hands with the congress and that's why you see like all these parties which are split i mean congress so congress o so i mean who who remembers what happened to them yeah all these leaders gradually they drifted back to the original party what you have yeah. seen uh, in sonia gandhi era see even till nasima rao sitaram kesri you had the split your congress tiwari they all merged different regions of course but all the splits that you have seen since 1998 since sonia gandhi took over they all became your alternatives in different state and we did not really see any attempt to bring them back let me take your case i mean you have been going after the bjp even oh. after getting suspended as a national spokesperson of the party and i had there been any attempt by the congress leadership to try to talk to you and bring you back or oh, okay let me answer that you know firstly your question is very valid i mean think about it that mani shankar ayer and pradam mukherjee floated their own parties yeah yeah and they came back finally to yeah. become you know they continued to be heavyweights for a long time mr mukherjee even ended up being the president of india okay, Now, I, yeah absolutely yeah. so you know i i agree with you that the congress if it is big tent it's not about just bringing in other people into your into your fold is also about bringing those who went away from you you know get the prodigal child back into your tent i i completely agree with that i i will completely again concede your point that the leadership needs to reach out to people you know you 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 have to tell yourself that uh, you know you actually are are seen as more shall we say large hearted when you don't treat an individual as a cipher because they are now probably you know not mainstream anymore because you threw them out but in in my case i would say this very frankly that yes uh the decision was abrupt uh i was i was taken aback you know by the suspension because i thought there will be a conversation preceding the suspension uh, i'm probably the guinness book of world records when nobody has been suspended for four years in the congress so you know as i say in life if you get a lemon you make a lemonade that's what i've done with that i think the truth is that yes uh, there was a conversation i've had with one or two people and uh, and i did say that you know i mean i have a lot to contribute to the party and i did reach out and i won't take names but to the highest levels of the congress and we did have a chat and i said that you know i'm more than happy to come back but give me a responsibility which is more strategic which is more critical and which is you know not just about you know being a, 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 the spokesperson kind of thing i've done that for enough years uh i believe my strength is in alliances my strength would be in terms of you know looking at how you can structure a more vibrant organization how you can probably do raising of funds and how you can possibly you know kind of change your entire communications plan uh is for the congress to come back to me with an alternative uh but you know ideologically i just believe the congress mirrors the idea of india uh you know the tragedy for the party is is been on a downhill for a very long time you know you lose in 214 in 19 you don't just lose you have been literally devastated and if this third defeat happens it is going to be an uphill climb for the congress and uh, the states well the party should had it done better i think in rajasthan chatisgarh or madhya pradesh the mood would have been more upbeat and mm. possibly that would have got the cadres more galvanized so maybe the struggle when you are on the losing side is what do i have to offer to people who are you know very aggressively ambitious you know frankly in my opinion a lot of people in companies continue to work not just because they get a high pay or because they get a promotion because they are heard they are respected and they feel included i think the congress is making a mistake in believing that people are leaving because the party has nothing to offer no mla or no mlc or no mp or rajya sabha seat if you just create a more vibrant inclusive more open transparent work culture people won't leave you 
you know, 2010, 11, I think uh, we had this interaction with Rahul Gandhi at his residence. And one of my journalist colleagues uh, asked him that, you know, you don't have any uh, big regional satraps. How do you expect your party ideology to be, you know, uh, propagated uh, down to the grassroots, grassroots? Who are the people who will take your ideology to the grassroots? And, you know, his answer was when Jawaharlal Nehru was there, did the party need people to go and spread the ideology? Just because Jawaharlal Nehru went to jail, I, I did not. So that means the party needs too many people. I mean, I can, I can represent the Congress. So is it that kind of feeling? I don't need the party. I am the party. Yeah, I, I let me tell you that, uh, you know, you hit the bullseye, you know. The truth is that the Congress party is fighting for an ideology, but it has to realize that if you want to propagate what you believe in, your philosophy, your political beliefs to the country, you need to win elections. And to win elections, you will need people. And to win elections in India, you need regional setups. You need young people. You need the veterans as well. You know, in politics, you get better with age. So many people say the veterans are over the hill. I don't agree. It, you, you need a combination. You need the young blood. You need the, the mid-experienced. You need the old, you know, the, the people who know how to play the chess game, the Shatrike Khiladi. It's a combination there. Yeah. What I was driving at is, the, you know, Gandhi is thinking that they personify the party. Mm. They personify the ideology of the Congress. No, I, I think the Congress has always had in the past the, the method in the madness. It's always been a very chaotic place. And I've been in the Congress to tell you that everyone is doing their own number at different times. And somehow, magically, it used to all coalesce together. But when your chips are down, and people lose the you know faith in the major political brand of the Gandhis. You know the morale goes down, and then the internal you know internecine battles begin, and then egos come into play. That everyone believes that this camp is stronger than the other camp. Now Sanjay Dhirupam is obviously an angry man, so he will say what he says. But probably there is a grain of truth because now you do have an, a Congress president. Those who believe that Mr. Kharge is a pushover, I don't quite agree with that either. Uh, Rahul has been focusing a lot more on, you know, the Yatra and so on and so forth. But I do think at the end of the day that, you know, to answer your question, that the Gandhis have probably been, you know, kind of deified to such an extent in the Congress that the Congress can't do with them, the Congress, Congress can't do without them. I think you got to give credit to the Gandhis for having stepped back from being officially the Congress president, at least. Uh, but, you know, Rahul is very popular within the Congress ranks. Priyanka is extremely popular. The Congress loves the Gandhis, which is, you know, totally understandable. The problem is that, you know, you've got to realize, and a lot of people don't realize it, that you can love the Gandhis. And, you know, I have great admiration for Rahul and Priyanka personally. I mean, how many people forgive the killers of their father as they have done? You know, people don't talk about it, but that's an extraordinary attribute of their uh, compassion and their, uh, you know, and their grit. But when the party leaders make a mistake, and these are a few people who probably don't give access to many other leaders to, to them. Everyone would like, want, wants to meet a Rahul or a Priyanka and so on and so forth. But there are many people around them who forget the fact that you should not be deciding to be, you know, the gatekeeper. Give people access. You know, when you meet a leader for even 10 minutes, they feel good about it. They feel they are being heard. And that is not happening. Uh, a number of second generation Congress leaders have defected over the last few years. Yeah. And uh, we hate using the term at the print, but is Congress really becoming a grand old party, which has no place for aspirations uh, uh, of, you know, the younger generation? Yeah, I have actually, I have joked about that, that is taken the grand old party too seriously and allowed itself to become fossilized. You know, the old actually has to be about traditional values. The old has to be about the respect for constitution. The old has to be a USP to say that we stand for the values for which the forefathers created the, the constitution, which is basically the foundation of this great country. The Congress by you know, actually seems to have kind of taken it to another level to say I'm old means I'm reluctant to change. Old means I'm not going to become more contemporary with the times. Why did so many leaders actually get to social media so late? I remember in 2013, uh, I remember the, the, the Congress had a communications head, a very revered gentleman 
And uh, I went, to, you know, when I became the official spokesperson, I had a meet in, meeting with him. His name is Janardhan Divedi. And I met Janardhan Divedi in his office. And I said, uh, you know, what about social media? And I remember Divedi ji telling me, kya hai ye sab social media? Ye sab chali raha hai. Ye sab ek hawa hai, ek bhram hai. Bhaspa jo kar raha hai, karne dije. Ham log, ham log sampar karenge. Ham log janta ke saath sampar karenge, baatchit karenge. Ham log, uh, you know, chorahe pe ja ke, nukar pe ja ke, ham log ka vartalap hoga. You see, we miss the story. And I think these are the learnings that the Congress party needs to recognize today. So hopefully, I mean, you wake up and tomorrow is another day. Anyway, so what I remember, one of our viewers asked, that, you know, if if the Congress loses this time also, should Rahul Gandhi be basically uh, vacating that leadership position for somebody else? Can there be a non-Gandhi at the helm? I mean, the real sense of the term, not, not like today. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, DK, a valid question. I actually wrote about it in explicit detail. What I what I recommended, and I wish the Congress Party had done it, I had recommended that the Congress Party should have a Sachin pilot Priyanka Gandhi Vadra ticket. Priyanka is very accessible to people. And I think she's one of the most underrated assets in the Congress Party. Just because she was thrown into Uttar Pradesh where the party didn't do well, I don't think, I don't know how they expected to do well suddenly. Uh, you know, she was branded as a political failure, which is so unfair, frankly. Uh, I do feel that Priyanka is largely an untested material. When she has campaigned, whether it was Himachal, where she spirited the campaign, or even in Karnataka, she was very, very effective. I feel that Priyanka Gandhi Vadra and a Sachin pilot ticket would have been fantastic. Uh, with Priyanka probably heading the party in the organization, she's very good in operations. I've seen her, uh, you know, do some stuff uh, uh, extremely well. And Sachin would have been the, the face for the leadership. You know, somebody who really brings in a lot of energy, hard work, passion, ambition, hunger. A very critical ingredient in politics is hunger. Do you want to win? And I and you see how he's fought. He's and I know him rather well. I felt it would have shown a good face of the Congress. A Sachin Priyanka combined with Rahul having the job of really galvanizing, you know, what I call is the core India, which lives in the villages, which is, you know, your Dalits and the Adivasis and, and the people who are really living on the poverty line or just above the poverty line, which is the strength of Rahul Gandhi. When you see Rahul in a Bharat Juro Yatra or a Bharat Juro Naya Yatra, he's actually, you know, if you look at him, he's glowing because that is his strength. So this should have been the ideal foil. Uh, if the Congress were to lose this election, that will be the way forward and should be the way forward. You said uh, Malik Arjun Kharge has not been a pushover. But what kind of changes have you seen him bringing into the Congress? Has anything changed for the Congress since he took over? Well, let me tell you, his problem, frankly, has been that the party has been hustled into one election after the other. And uh, the other problem has been that, you know, end of day, uh, he was, you know, troubleshooting between Mr. Singh Dev and Mr. Uh, 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 I, I think in, uh, uh, in Mr. Baghel in Chhattisgarh or between Mr. Gelot and Sachin in Rajasthan. You know, you know, you had to bring many egos into place. I think until these losses... Mr. Kharge had ensured that nobody left the party. But you're finding, again, the exodus is beginning to happen. Probably it's got to do with the elections. But I do feel that Mr. Kharge has been able to, able to inspire a lot of confidence in the people that he's out there for a fight. You know, given his age, I've been very impressed by his uh, ability to still be out there, do press conferences, do public meetings. And, uh, you know, when Mr. Kharge's name was recommended by Mamata and Arvind Kejriwal in the India meeting to become the prime ministerial face. Ideally, tactically and strategically, I, as a Congress leader, would have said, accept it. We know what the opinion polls are saying about these 2024 elections. What's your prediction? Do you my prediction... Believe my, in Abkibad, Char Is that I, You know, in my... You know, DK, I have always believed that in politics, you've got to be an eternal optimist. You've got to have the faith in the fact that, you know, opinion polls are opinion polls, and I respect them. I may not agree with all of them. But 
you know, given the diversity and the complexity of Indian politics and the multiple issues that are there day in and day out, uh, it's hard to imagine that anybody can really get the pulse right. I look at India in the last couple of weeks, and you see there's been this whole Arvind Kejriwal issue, which has now escalated. Uh, the, the electoral bonds talks about criminality, corruption, crony capitalism of a very high order. Uh, the Bharajaro Nyay Yatras have happened. I think there is, I think the opposition too has got its act together in, in, in many states, if not in all the states. There is a pushback. The issues of unemployment, which is like disturbing, it's one of the most serious, uh, you know, kind of challenges any government would have had. Uh, will that have no impact? I, I'll be surprised. Rural distress, serious issue. Farmers are still out on the streets. Private investment, nothing to talk about. MSMEs struggling. Rural wages not gone up in 10 years. Yes, you have built some highways. You may have given some cylinders. You may have probably made uh, you know some electricity, reach a few homes. Fair enough. But that's you're supposed to do that over 10 years. But the fact that people lost lives in COVID, the fact that today we are giving 60% of India's population free food grains for the next five years tells you that poverty, inequality, 1% of Indians owning 45% of its wealth or 41% of its wealth, rural distress, severe unemployment, food inflation, corruption, political funding, abuse of CBI, ED and IT, an open attempt to try and hijack an election in Chandigarh. I mean, the utterances of the Supreme Court, Operation Lotus. If I make the list of issues, the BJP has no chance of winning. So why and how is the BJP the front winner? One, a huge propaganda machinery that works. Maybe Mr. Modi is still trusted by a lot of people. Beats me, but maybe true. The third factor is the opposition hasn't been able to galvanize it enough. Can they do it? Well, you never know. So my short answer to you will be what can happen in the elections? Uh, I think the BJP is definitely not making the halfway mark. I'm convinced of that. If it does, it's a miracle. I think Mr. Modi and the others are you know, not, not expressing any confidence in those big numbers. It's like more like a gaslighting, influencing people to say, I'm winning, so you know, why don't you vote for me anyway? Uh, I feel the opposition will do much better. I do believe the BJP is not making the halfway mark. Probably will be closer to 220, 225. Now, how it plays out, we'll have to wait and see. My, my feedback from South India is that the Congress and the India Alliance is going to do remarkably well. The critical issue is going to be those 204 seats, including Maharashtra in that, where the BJP and Congress go head to head. Last time, B Congress won 16 of 202. That's an 8% hit rate. If the Congress ups its game, you got an election. If the Congress is not able to do well in Karnataka, in Maharashtra, and even take away some seats from the Hindi heartland states, as they are called, uh, then I think India Alliance will do well because they should do well in Bihar and in West Bengal. Haryana, the Congress should be able to up its numbers. But if the Congress is not able to do well in Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, and in 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 um, in obviously in Uttar Pradesh, I see a tough fight. Uh, then I think the India Alliance numbers will come down. Okay, one last question from me, and it's about the city that I come from, Mumbai. It's also the oh. city that Congress comes from. Uh, Congress yes. was born in Mumbai, and uh, yet we are seeing today. I mean, almost all the tall leaders of Congress who were there in Mumbai have left the party or have uh, retired into the shadows. Uh, yeah. Congress has lost all six seats in 2014 and 2019 and uh, which brings me to my question, do you think there was any shred of truth to what Sanjay Nirupam was trying to get at that allowing Shiv Sena Uddhav Thakre faction to contest on four out of six seats is practically ringing the Congress's death knell in the city? To be honest, he's right. Because this is a city where the Congress was born. This is a city from where the, the whole Quit India movement began. The, the, the August Kranti Medan is actually not very far from Mani Bhavan. And, and I, I go past that place practically every day. So the truth is that this is the origin of the Congress party is here. And I can tell you that the Congress actually has abandoned a state and a city 
which is the commercial capital of India. Can anybody abandon New York? Whether you are, do you think the Republicans abandon New York because they never win in New York? They still go there a million times. This is the, uh, the entertainment capital of India. This is where the big industry sits. This is where the big Dalal Street and the Bombay Stock Exchange and the NSE is. You know, in ignoring, and this is, by the way, the melting pot of India, the most cosmopolitan city India can see. And Mansi, you lived here, so you probably know that. Yeah. I think in ignoring Mumbai, and I have been very vocal on this subject, I think the Congress basically has ignored its own history. And it comes back to bite you. And, you know, Milind Devra's father was the president of, of Mumbai. Right. Uh, one of the tallest figures in Indian politics and one of Congress was Rajni Patel. He was from Mumbai. Right. And today we have given it on a silver platter to the BJP. Yes, I think when you have an alliance with Uddhav, these things will happen. So ignore that for the moment. But we have allowed our footprint to be diminished in Mumbai. And that, I believe, is, is creating, in my opinion, a kamikaze mission. It's, it's Harakiri. The Congress has to figure out a way to get back to Mumbai. Otherwise, the fight for India actually becomes even tougher. All right. We'll end on that unfortunate note. Thank you so much for a, such a riveting and honest conversation. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you, DK. And thank you to our viewers. Thank you, Mansi. Thank you, DK. It's been thank lovely you. chatting with you. Great talk. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you.